Insurance is a fundamental part of the financial services industry. Most of the time, companies think of themselves as fulfilling their service function by honouring the promises they make in the contracts they issue. However, it is my belief that the industry needs to provide service not just by paying valid claims, but by benefiting society more broadly. Actuaries have a vital role to play in helping insurers of the future live up to this standard. And I will try to elucidate what this means in this presentation, focusing on the non-life sector. Insurers perform two critical services to society by assessing and accepting risk. How should these services transform to be more beneficial to society? Let's start with the assessment of risk. This is already undergoing significant developments driven by actuaries. Combining the abundance of data in our modern world with powerful new data science techniques enables more accurate and granular pricing than was previously possible. More accurate pricing can provide insurers with a competitive advantage, but it does not necessarily lead to a societal benefit. In fact, there are a host of potential harms which new pricing methods and data sources are at risk of creating. These include a lack of pricing transparency and auditability, model bias or unwitting proxy discrimination, and increased price segmentation, leading to unaffordable insurance for high-risk customers. The good news is that there is a high degree of awareness and research being done on these issues within the actuarial community. However, it is important that we remain aware of the potential for trust in insurers to be seriously undermined if we rush to pick up these new tools without fully understanding their consequences. The best way to ensure that better risk assessment benefits society is to use it to prevent risky behaviours and incentivise risk mitigating actions. There is a relevant analogy here from the criminal sphere. The societies with the least crime are those which successfully determine and avert the factors which cause crime, in addition to identifying and prosecuting criminals after the fact. There are a number of examples of companies who have begun to implement preventative approaches, but it is still far from the norm. One example can be found in commercial cyber cover, where some insurers have developed the expertise to examine the IT security systems of their customers. They subsequently inform the companies of any vulnerabilities that they identify, as well as offering premium reductions if they successfully fix their deficiencies. Retail insurance examples include telematics motor policies, which provide driving feedback to policyholders, as well as household insurers who install smart devices in homes to detect early signs of water leakages, break-ins, fires, etc. In workers' compensation, some companies have introduced tools which help to identify those at high risk of chronic pain and suggest changes in their treatment plan to prevent them from ever developing it. Designing and implementing such products requires significant upfront investment and management buy-in. However, as the owners of pricing models and custodians of balance sheets, actuaries are in a great position to drive their adoption. We just need to expand our toolkit from solely quantifying risk factors to thinking of practical and cost-effective ways of mitigating them. In the long run, this could be beneficial for both society and insurers since it should lead to lower levels of losses and greater demand for insurance. Let's now switch our focus to the acceptance of risk. Insurers can play a key part in helping society to innovate and deal with new challenges by taking on new types of risk. In recent years, insurers have been faced with three emerging risks, cyber, pandemic and climate. In the case of cyber and pandemic risk, the general approach has been to isolate these clearly using appropriate wording and create new products and accompanying tools to provide the cover desired by policyholders. However, I want to focus on climate risk for which such isolation is clearly not desirable. If conventional property insurance policies are altered to exclude cover for natural disasters, then they cease to provide one of their key purposes. Actuaries are already assisting in quantifying climate risk by improving catastrophe models and developing climate indices which reflect the increasing frequency and severity of natural disasters. But this alone is not enough. If we simply get better at pricing cap risk without working to mitigate it, the result will be exorbitant price rises and lower insurance penetration, particularly for properties in high-risk areas. This can already be seen by the increased proliferation of government pools that are being set up to help such communities 
such as the Australian Cyclone Pool and Flood Re in the UK. To enable successful acceptance of climate risk, insurers therefore need to act to reduce catastrophe risk, and actuaries are in a powerful position to advocate appropriate actions. Examples include investing in direct mitigation projects, such as dams and seawalls, or projects aimed at developing more resilient essential infrastructure systems. We can further support this by proposing capital frameworks which allocate lower capital charges to green investments and higher charges to carbon intensive assets. Actuaries could also try to cooperate with public sector organisations to introduce and improve early warning systems, as well as influence land planning policy. Finally, there is a growing body of evidence that suggests a correlation between a company's ESG rating and their propensity to suffer insurance losses. By incorporating ESG factors into pricing tools, as well as advising policyholders of their relevance to premium rates, insurers can both price more accurately and help to reduce the incidence of environmentally damaging behaviour. In conclusion, actuaries can help secure the foundation of a bridge to a better tomorrow by focusing on the prevention and mitigation of risk. Solely focusing on the assessment of risk without incorporating these two components is too passive and will not serve society successfully. Furthermore, actuaries must support society as it advances into the future by developing the tools needed to deal with new types of risk. We can act as the stabilizers while the world gets used to riding its bike of the future. I have focused on steps that can be taken to address climate risk here, but there are and will be many other challenges for us to get involved in. We just need to answer the call. Thank you for listening.